Hey there, Caleb Wojcik from DIY Video Guy, and in this video I'm going to be teaching you about YouTube cards. About a week or two ago, YouTube released these cards as an answer to their annotations not working on mobile and just overall being kind of ugly, in my opinion. So I'm going to teach you in this video how to use YouTube cards. So to get to them in your YouTube profile, go ahead and go to a specific video. So you can go into your creator studio and then pull up a recent video in the video manager and you can just pick any of them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick an older one that I don't currently have cards on. Let's see this one, episode five. Now, when you have this up, now you can go to this cards tab and you can see there's, they still have the annotations tab, but if you go to the cards tab, then you can add cards wherever you want in the video. This is a little slider that will help you jump through uh, if you actually hover over it and you can slide it and get a little bit more precise than before with annotations having to slide over this section. So if there's a specific section you want to add a card, so let's say maybe at the end when I say subscribe to our channel, see these are annotations that I've put and I specifically made this part of the video so that you could hover over these and go to the different playlist. But now if they phase these out or if someone's on mobile, they can't use these. So let me go ahead and add card. And there's five different things you can add. You can add a website and your website has to be tied to your YouTube account. So I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Fan funding, which is actually direct donations through uh, through YouTube site, then there's fundraising, which if you had like a Kickstarter campaign or Indiegogo or something like that, you could use that merchandise. So any sort of products, and then you can still link to videos and other playlists. Now, right now at the time of filming this, there's not a subscribe card because there's already this kind of thumbnail thing that you can add in the corner of your videos, but you can still do the video and playlist piece like I'm doing on these. So what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and do the playlist one. So I'm going to link to my gear playlist. So I'll go ahead and create this here. And then you can click over to playlists and then to my gear playlist here and then click create card. Now you can also link to some other playlist if it's not listed on your channel and it's someone else's. So go ahead and create card. And now you can see it here at the top. It says suggested and then the name of the playlist. If I click on the playlist over here, you can edit and change what it says up here if it's not a playlist. So let me go ahead and just uh, for a test, add a website and go http kilobogic.com slash, I'm just gonna say podcast. Now it'll update the link and it's pulling images from the website. And this piece is what shows up after they click the card. And then this part is what shows up before they click the card. This will be the card teaser. So let me go ahead and choose a different image because I know there's a better square one. I'll just choose my podcast artwork and I'll just say, listen, actually I'm gonna do the call to action. Listen to our audio podcast. And then I do this little double arrow thing. And then for here, I'm just gonna put the DIY video guy podcast. Great card. And now at 307, actually there's two of them. So I can I believe move them uh, and change where they're at. So I just moved this one to the right just so I could focus on, on the audio podcast. So you can see now the call to action pops up there. And if they click the I, it actually brings in the artwork, shows a preview of the link, the name and the call to action again. So it's better looking in my opinion than these annotations with the boxes and the fonts and everything. And they also work on mobile, have a nice little image, but you just have to be very specific about what you put in the title and in the link. So now let's go to how you actually enable that website because that's an important piece because if you don't have your website, your one website linked to your YouTube account, then it won't show up. It'll actually be an error. So if I go ahead and do some other website, oh, that's opening settings. If I go ahead and just do a new card here and do associate website, and then I do some other website like yahoo.com or something. See, it'll say this website is not associated with your YouTube account and they won't let you use it. So you got to make sure that you've linked your website to your account. So if you go to, I believe the dashboard, 
Uh, let me go channel. <laughs> if you go to channel and then go to advanced, this is where you can add your website. So tell us if your channel is associated with another website. And this helps their, your search results, verifies your channel um, and everything like that. So if you didn't have anything here, you'd have to put in your your website and then you would try to verify it. And to verify it, you actually have to put some code inside your website, usually I think in the header piece, but this is where you start that process and they have documentation on how to do that. So that pretty much wraps up cards. Uh, these are still brand new. I put them on a recent video here. So if I play a recent video, I believe at the end, I put a little card in. If I didn't, it's gonna look funny. Okay, I didn't put a card in this one, but I have done it for some of my videos. And uh, actually, let me find a video that I've done it in. Video manager, videos. Okay, I did this one. So you can see here, this is a sales video for my course that came out. And if you click up here, it says check out the course, then the card pops up and this then goes to my sales page for the course, which the original link, so this is actually a little bit of a hack. The original link here is to my website. It's calebogic.com. But what I did was I set up a redirect and you see it actually goes to calebogicfilms.com. So that's one way to link to your website, but then have the link actually go somewhere else. So I could link to Yahoo like I was trying to before if I did some sort of 301 redirect using um, like a URL shortener website that I used as my verified uh, domain or using something like uh, in Squarespace, they have a 301 redirect section where you can punch in codes for your your website, or you can use something like, uh, I'm trying to think of what the WordPress short link is called. WordPress short link. I'm blanking on it because I haven't used WordPress in a while. Uh, Pretty Links, that's what it's called. So Pretty Links for WordPress is uh, an app that I used to use to do redirects so I could have short links like calebodge.com slash seven would go to my podcast episode. And so that was what I used when I was on WordPress, pretty link. You can pay for the upgraded version and you can also track how many people are going to those URLs. So that wraps up this video on YouTube cards. I just wanted to show a little bit about the ins and outs on how to make them because it's not that straightforward and have the little bit of an information about how to get your website on there because you need to make sure you verify it to able to enable it to go to an external website. So that wraps up this video of DIY Video Guy TV. Hope you enjoyed it. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel or watch this on the iTunes video podcast, whichever way you prefer. And I'll see you in another video. Cheers. Take care.